Dirty Bit, uh, The Time by uh, uh, Black Eyed Peas, Black that would be Peas. another one, you know, kind of higher energy. And those songs are actually pretty easy to mix together. So, Grandma, what do you like to listen to? Will there ever be an end to Mobile Music Thursday? Not so long as there's DJs out there spinning the music to make people dance and, and make people happy. I'm really excited about this week's guest on Mobile Music Thursday. We're going down to Florida, into the sunshine state of oranges and happiness, to find out how to pack a dance floor down in Florida, or maybe get a few tips on how to put our mixes together. Out of Tampa, Florida, my guest has got a company called Fortuity Entertainment. And I really like that, Fortuity. It really kind of sticks out, and it's different. I haven't heard anything like that before. And uh, he has been at this for for almost 20 years as a DJ rocking the dance floors down there in uh, Florida and wherever else that he's been asked to play. The person I'm talking about is the person you're looking at on the screen. That's Marlon Brown. Marlon, thanks for coming on the show on Mobile Music Thursday. Thanks for having me, Jason. I'm oh. really excited to be here. Awesome. So uh, I cannot, uh, like, uh, the holidays is like the elephant in the room. So we're just coming out of the holidays. Did you get everything you wanted? Yes, I and get everything I wanted. Did you give everything spend- you wanted? No, no. There's still a few Ferraris that are, you know, on order. Right. That are that are on uh, layaway. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like permanently. So. <laughs> can I can I put this Ferrari on layaway? Yeah. How much hey. take a month? You know? Right. I'm like a rain check. What so, two dollars a week get me? You know? That's great. Was it so? Uh, so the holidays are good for you, and the New Year's Eve is good for you as well. Yes, as always. Yeah, I spend most of the time with family, so it's always a good. Awesome. Can't go wrong. Well, let's start talking about, let's start talking about music and the way that you spin and the way that you do what you do uh, so, so well. Um, okay. So thinking about like your last wedding, cause you mostly perform weddings. Yeah. Yes. That's a, that is correct. So thinking about like your last wedding or even your last couple of weddings, as you're, as you're going in and, and getting ready to play for them, kind of what is your game plan going in or your kind of general uh, view of probably where you're going to start and where you might go with this crowd that night? You know what? Um, the thing that really works well for me is getting to know my bride and groom. Um, and also getting to know the wedding party because I use the wedding party and the bride and groom typically as the catalysts for the party. Um, and so over the course of the you know, the weeks preceding the wedding, you know, we'll do interviews. I'll talk to them on the phone. I go uh-huh. to, the, uh, to the rehearsal dinners and, you know, I talk to them about the kind of music they like to hear. Uh, and I also have, you know, some do not playlists and, you know, uh, must playlists and things mm-hmm. like that. And that gives me a good area to start. And then also, as you're talking to the people, you kind of get a gist of their personality. And it kind of gives you an idea of, you know, this person's, you know, these guys are partiers. So, you yeah, know, we talk about rock a little bit and they're all like into it. Then you kind of know, you know, where you're going to go with the music. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So that's that's all in the in the planning meeting. Yeah. Yeah. In the planning meetings, because, you know, there's the initial meeting with the clients and then there's a series of interviews that happens, you know, either on the phone or in person that really helps me build a, uh, helps me build a picture. So. Okay. So you just kind of like, you kind of like walk through a conversation through the genres and see what they get excited about and make yeah. notes that way rather than yeah. uh, having them choose from a list or do they do that as well? They, well, actually the way out, the, typically the way I'll do it is I'll say, you know, you know, open ended questions. Well, what kind of music do you guys like? Mm-hmm. What are you What are you listening to in the car? You know, if you guys go out and you go to a party somewhere, what's the kind of thing that's getting everybody up and shaking their booties on the dance floor? You mm-hmm. know, and you know that's where we go. And then I also have, um, I don't have a list for them to choose from, but I just give them my, you know, there's a on my planner the last page is you know here are our must play songs mm-hmm. and. That gives me a good foundation right there. Oh, they list they list their the must play songs. Yeah, yeah. So I tell them, you know, give me like ten songs. Oh, ten. That okay. You guys really like to have. You know, you don't have to. I give them the option. If you want to completely script out to me, fine. But you don't have to. You can give me a general idea of what you like. You know, five to ten songs, and it gives me a place to start. So, and that's been working out pretty well, especially the last wedding that I did. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That's so. Tell me about the last wedding. Like, what did they? Uh, um, what, based on what they gave you, what mm-hmm. did you start the night off with? Well, it was, it was interesting because, uh, the last wedding that I did, the bridesmaids, when they did their, uh, 
their little bridesmaid party, they went to Puerto Rico for a couple of days. And apparently while they were there, uh, Shake It Off and All About That Face became like their theme song. Okay. So weird. as I'm interviewing, yeah. yeah Let me just they, say that's they, weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I I'm won't kidding. say it was weird. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was it was really interesting because they were they were so the the situation that they described to me literally felt like it came out of a movie. Oh you know? wow! Like if we did like Bridesmaids two. These ladies would have this, starred this would have in the movie. It. Yeah, and it was really good. And so you know we talked about the kind of music they liked, and as we're going along, they're just spitting out stuff. And what I do is as I'm talking to them, I record all of our conversations oh. because I can't write that fast. You know, I, right. I, I had that little thing where you, you're thinking one thing and you're trying to write the other thing. Your pen right. is kind of pausing. Sure. So I record everything on my phone and then afterwards I go over it and I think, oh, they mentioned this, they mentioned that. And so that made for a really successful party because it was stuff that they were familiar with. You know, even some things that were kind of out there like uh, dancing in the moonlight. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's not a, that I, wouldn't be a go to song that I would have. I played it. They lost their minds. Wow. It, was yeah. that on the list or was that one yeah. that you kind of picked? <laughs> it was on it. Um, in some, at some point during the conversation between the bridesmaid and the, and, or excuse me, the bridesmaids and the bride, mm-hmm. somebody mentioned that they love that song. So I found a copy. of So it. you kind of picked it up offhandedly, really? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I try to do. I try to do stuff like that to kind of surprise them a little bit. And when I played it, they were less, they were just like, Whoa! right. You know? Like he's what psychic. <laughs> when everybody's hands go up and they're screaming, they're like, yes. You know, that's a home so, run right there. Yeah. 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 It was, it was really cool. And, and it was a good, it was a good wedding overall, but having the good music that everybody loved. Really, right. Right. Really and really being up. tuned, really getting tuned into what these, this group really digs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so you, so then you started off with uh, like, what about the bass and, uh, well, and shake it off what, is how you started the dance. I started off with shake it off. Okay. Because that's where they, they were. And they flooded the floor and went bananas. Water. Yeah. As soon as it came on, I put that on, I mixed into happy, and then at, you know, a little bit later on I threw on all about that bass. I didn't want to do everything all at, you know, we had <laughs> about two hours. Back. You know, I didn't want to well, shoot the whole thing out in the very beginning. So Right. Well, you know, so now some people might say, just being a little devil's advocate here, uh, that you know, that well why or ask why wouldn't you hang on, you know, knowing that 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 song is so str- going to be so strong with them and so hot with them. Why would not you hold off on that and play that later? Um, I'll tell you this. If, if we have, there's been weddings that I've done where by the time we get to the party section, we only have an hour. In that case, I'll just throw everything out there right away just to get them up and get them going. Mm-hmm. But when I know we have a little more time, I try to leave room for, uh, for requests. So okay. I'll get a couple of them, a couple of good songs that I know will get them up and get everybody going. Sure. And then I'll wait and see what comes in and try to, you know, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm the same time and I have an assistant with me. So at the same time we're thinking of other things mm-hmm. to try to mix in with the songs that we started with. And then we save a couple of them for a little bit later on. Like, um, you know, maybe after we do the cake cutting, we want to get people back on the floor. We'll use something like the all about that bass or something like that that gets everybody up. So that's why I don't always try to use them all in the beginning because I don't want to, I'm trying not to leave myself flat, you mm-hmm. know, because it, it, so do you yeah. categorize your songs like by like, you know, power, power hook song, you know, like party, it would party rock anthem be in your, uh, you know, a high likelihood of hooking the floor. I don't have a, Formal categorized, or is it kind of a mental list from but it, yeah, working regularly? If, if I'm if I'm thinking of like like upbeat songs, that might be one of them. Um, uh, Thirty bit, uh, the time by uh, uh, Black Eyed Peas. Black that Eyed would be Peas. another one. You know, stuff along the those lines that one they're kind of high energy, and those songs are actually pretty easy to mix together. Sure, so, sure. You know, has I'll, I- I'll, as a little aside, has I got a feeling started to burn or are people really still digging it? I actually haven't played that in a while. Oh. I, here's the interesting thing. I use, I got a feeling I use the intro instrumental 
a lot of times for the introductions. Okay. But I, I haven't played the actual song. Gosh, I don't think I've played it this year. And no one's requesting it. Nobody, nobody's asked me for it. I wonder if it's, I now I wonder if it's kind of burning out. Uh, Cause Macarena is just starting to come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Macarena. People love the Macarena. Uh, another one that always seems to get people going for me is uh, Ice Ice Baby. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like you can't, you can't, you almost get in trouble if you haven't played it by a certain time of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hello, yeah. Ice Ice Baby. Yeah, exactly. And, and so. the most unlikely people will be out there just like, yo, <laughs> get on this. You know, you're like, really? You guys? Grandma okay. Over, you got to need that vanilla ice. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I do. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like those. So I, I keep those kind of things in my mind. Okay. Because, you know, the Ice Ice Baby that I know I can throw that on later on. Um, you know, like I said, the Dirty Bid. Uh, there's another one, uh, Kid Cootie, Day and Night. There's like a club version with like a, it's like 130 beats per second. Wow. Huh. That a vein. also goes pretty good too. Yeah. And it mixes great with, you know, a couple of those other songs we were talking about. So yeah, I try to keep those, try to keep them together and try to keep them in my brain. Sure. So, sure. That's great. Do you, when you mix, do you mix like, uh, um, do you go cross, do you just go cross genre? Do you try to run in sets in terms of like, do you do a couple disco or three disco? And then I'm going to do, uh, some eighties rock and then I'm going to do uh, some sixties and then I'm going to do some Motown or, or do you just, do you cross, how do you, how do you mix it all together? Well, I used to, I used to try to put sets together in the beginning and, you know, in the early days to pretty much structure it just like that. But now I pretty much just see what the crowd is going for. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I'll start with some of the older stuff in the beginning of the wedding, in the beginning of the dance portion, because typically the older folks will leave earlier. So I try to get stuff in for in for them to enjoy before they decide to leave, and I'll you know do some sets, you know maybe some sixties, you know respect and things like that. Is that and after then, you get it going? You get it. So do you get it going with the young people to get it hop hopping, and then right. you put then you shift into some older stuff to try to to draw out and get the older people that are involved that maybe take a little time, a little more nudging. Yeah, it, exactly. Or or if I if um you know if we know the older people are a little reluctant, a slow song. You know, a couple of slow songs. I am not above playing a couple of slow songs. You know, <laughs> people on the floor, you know. And so I'll do that. They'll get up. Everybody's dancing. Maybe go into some shout, you know. The older right. folks know those songs. Right. And they kind of march it forward. Do you and, like to do, let's just, uh, speaking of slow songs since it came up. So do you like to do uh, mostly contemporary slow songs? Or do you reach back into Percy Sledge and Unchained Melody and like kind of those old, I don't know what I would, they, they kind of like they've been staples at wedding dance slow songs for years. Have you, do you kind of, what do you do? I, I'll actually go all over the map. I, one of my favorite slow songs is uh, Always and Forever. So if I can sneak that in somewhere, I'll try to do that. Um, and then, you know, who's that by again? That's Heat Wave. He went, always always and forever. Okay, right. One of my favorite songs, you know. Um, maybe uh, I want to know by Joe, which is a little more contemporary. Uh -huh. You know, it again, it kind of depends on the crowd. But I am not above. I, 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 Jason, I'll be all over the map as long as it'll make my clients, yes, entertained. Sure. You know, I don't, I don't really have a lot of ego in that respect. You know, right. As long as they're having fun, as long as they're having a good time. You know, and they're if they're requesting it or I see them dancing to it, I'll feed them. Sure. You know, so yeah, staying on top of that, staying on top of that, uh, that, that pulse. Uh, yeah, sort of exactly. Thing. So, so do you have, so do you, so do, when you are pulling your slow songs, are you looking at the age of your crowd and thinking like, oh, you know, I'm going to do, you know, let's, uh, I bet this looks like their high school time and pull that kind of stuff. Do you think about that? I do think about that, but uh, one thing that actually works better for me is to I actually talk to people. Mm. I, you know, while we're, you know, we get set up. There's a little lull between the the start of the uh, of the wedding and you know where we have to do stuff. People are milling about. Sure, I'll go over and talk introduce to myself. Music? Hey, I'm Marlon. You know, yeah, you make music bit. small talk. Yeah, exactly. You know, hey, what kind of songs you guys like? You know, and just go from there and just kind of keep a couple of you know and and. Again, not above approaching the grandmas, the grandpas. So, grandma, 
What do you like to listen to? You know. So what are you, you like a little, little? Are you like a little river, or are you more like a quiet riot? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you're more of a Def Leppard. What? What would you? How would you categorize yourself? <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, right along those lines, you know, because it's <laughs> just like that. Yeah, because I'm trying to, I am trying to make the guests feel like they're part of it. So I try to give them a little input. Now I'm not going to let them override anything that you know my my wedding my my uh, newlyweds are requesting. Sure, but yeah, yeah, I'll I'll talk to people and, and see what they like. Right, and try what to if, use that to get them on floor. You know, what if like the songs that get requested are like. They're total dogs. Yeah. Now, you know, we have that because, you know, somebody eventually will say, well, how about some Skinner, you know, some Stairway to Heaven? Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. The, no, Maybe the long not. LP version. Yeah. How about the know, wall? So, yeah. <laughs> you know, on, on those things, I'll, I'll say, I try to be diplomatic. Hey, that's a good choice. But, you know, we are kind of at a wedding. So <laughs> how about something... <laughs> That maybe people would dance to. What do you think? What do you What are you thinking about? Yeah, just along those. Lines. I love that. We are kind of at a wedding. Yeah, we're kind we're of at a all, wedding. You know, we don't want, want to bring anybody down. Things. You know. Right, and, right. I wouldn't know, ruin I, your wedding with this song. Why do we want to do that for them? <laughs> so no, that's not <laughs> a thing to say at all. That's not. I'm not trying to get chased out of here. So right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. How that was yeah. that was my early years. That's the, my early years of DJing. It's like, what mm-hmm. do you mean? <laughs> I'm gonna play this till the end. I'm yeah, not proud wait. of my early years as, as a DJ. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, to a great extent, what a lot of guys complain about now. So yeah, yeah. But hey, that that was was, and then I saw the light. But you know, we I think I think a lot of us started out that way because most people, I know the guy, a couple of guys that trained me or that I kind of piled around with in the early days, they were like almost like that shock jock type of guy mm. when they got on a microphone, and. You know, as their assistant, I'd look and go, oh, I don't know if I want to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, the, and like the guys that I know, the guy that I modeled, that I was kind of modeling like how to DJ after mm-hmm. was a guy in my hometown that was DJing. Mm-hmm. And I even modeled my my uh, console after him. Not yeah. even really thinking. Like I'm, I'm paying attention to the wrong things clearly here because yeah. I created myself a sit down console. And when yes. I would sit up, I literally sit down in a chair yeah. like behind my DJ desk. Same thing. And, I, I, and and he did that. Only I think now reflecting, the reason he did that was because he was in a wheelchair. <laughs> Otherwise, he might have been standing or made a stand-up <laughs> console. But that never occurred to me. I'm like, you have you have, you have a sit-down console. That's how you DJ. Well, but the guy that taught me, that's what he had. He had, oh my gosh, two single-disc Sony CD players. A PV mixer board, a big giant PV amp. PVs were huge still, then. Yeah, I still use a PV amp. By the Do way. you really? But, well, yeah. yeah, those things are like boat anchors that never die. Oh my gosh, that thing is a tank. I've had, as a matter of fact, it's the only amp I've ever had, and all the time I've been doing this, wow. and it looks like a churn. But that's, yeah, that's saying something. Yeah, so I started out kind of the same way, and then I realized, okay. It looks kind of weird. You're constantly getting up and sitting down and getting up and sitting down. <laughs> yeah. You know? And or then you eventually just... I got to the point where I was just standing all the time. Right. So, right. You know, because, I, because, you know, because everybody thinks we don't do anything anyway. The last thing we need is for them to see us just hide. Well, you know, top. you know how to look busy as a DJ, don't you? Yeah. What? Let me Get show you. I forgot. <laughs> I'm working. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, now let me show you. This is, this is a DJ on break. <laughs> All right. I have to remember that again. <laughs> but we, di- we digress. We digress. Yeah. Marlon, this has been so great to have you on the show. So insightful. So fun. You've been such a fun guest and uh, and really been interesting in how you mix music and put it together and how you make it work and make it work for you. I can Just by listening to you, I have no doubt people just have a blast at your events. Thanks for coming on Mola Music Thursday to help uh, make the DJ industry just a little bit better. Thanks for having me, Jason. I really appreciate it. You bet. Everyone, it's Marlon Brown of Fortuity, Fortuity, if I can say it right, Fortuity yes. Entertainment out yes. of Tampa, Florida. Thanks for being on the show. That wraps it up for another Mobile Music Thursday for this week. We'll see you again next Thursday.